And uh, speaking of North Carolina, Raleigh is in North Carolina. And there was a Raleigh man who was charged with insurance fraud after faking image to show a hair in his McDonald's burger. Oh, this might have been the 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 court case that I had this week. Okay, let's look. Let's Officials hear. accuse Ronnie Bernard Truesdale, which is ironic that it's Truesdale, and he is a liar, <laughs> of planting a hair on the burger after removing the wrapper. Truesdale also said the burger caused him to become nauseated. He filed an insurance claim with uh, with a company, an insurer for McDonald's for pain and suffering, as well as one thousand five hundred ninety five dollars in medical expenses. What? So he, yeah. But he was charged with a felony attempt to obtain property by false pretense. Mm. He got nausea. He's saying he got nauseated by one or two hairs on a burger. And apparently it was his own. Could you know how many hairs if this I dude's today? married? His wife hates him. <laughs> 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 you know where I'm going with that, right? Like if one I don't, him. where are if you going? One, if one or two hairs bothered him. He's a douche. <laughs> he's like, he's like. Obviously, he wasn't married to somebody from the seventies. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. All right. Side question: Are your guys' uh, shower walls like caked with you know like clods of hair that your wife just throws on the side? Fuck. Um, that does not. No, they're they're from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. Uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> all all like over. a single hair. It's like don't put single hair on the side of the fire. Just wash it down. It'll catch in the drain. We scoop it. We toss it. It's easy. Mm. Yeah. Let me let me explain. So I I I fell prey to one of these uh you know TikTok or well, it wasn't TikTok but it was Instagram made me buy it things right like one of these um bath mats that's like grippy but at the same time like lets water freely flow through it so that you can stand on and everything like that. I have seen more red and black hair caught in that thing just sitting on top of like where the drain is from this woman than I've seen in a shower ever. And I don't have very much hair. And she does. She has no hair. Um, <laughs> but she's doesn't have much hair up here either because she shaves all the way around yeah. her head. So I love that thing. And but I thankfully... I know exactly what Brandon's talking about. Thankfully, because I've had girlfriends where I've you get in the shower and it's like against the shower wall, and you're like, what? what? Like, I don't know how it happens. That's what Jeez. confuses me. Like, do they get do they turn on the shower head so heavy that it just knocks their weave off and shoves it into the back wall behind well, them? Let me tell you how it's it like happens. Seeing a, it's like seeing um what, what do you call it? It's like seeing a a a uh, a sh like the shadow figure that they talk about when there's a nuclear blast and it's just like Phew! and they're gone but there's the shadow behind them that's women in the shower in their hair what happens <laughs> with me anyways because i have hair is when i put the beard conditioner in and then i comb it through then i look at the comb because that's when it that's when it comes and uh and then there's just hair so i'm not gonna throw it down the drain and then have to you know clog it i'm just i just throw it on the wall yeah <laughs> he's just like Jace yeah. called it uh, shower graffiti, and I think that's kind of what it is. Is it, it's usually probably a single or two hairs, and what they'll do is they'll like, oh, it's on my arm, we'll pull it off, and then just like cake it on the side of the of the shower, and it'll stick there, and it dries there. So it's like hell getting right. it off. Have, have you ever like gone to grab your brush and not realize that your wife has used it, and you go like this, and like you feel like hairs drag across, and you're like, oh. like like a daddy long legs just did this. Yeah, you're like ah ah. Because that shit happens to me all the time. <laughs> so um, when it, when it comes ahead. to this art, article, though, I, I just wanted to say uh, it's an interesting argument, and I don't necessarily sit on one side of it or, or the other. But when it comes to being able to sue for frivolous reasons, frivolous lawsuits, um, or uh, you know, we, we, the McDonald's case from all those years ago, decades ago, with the old woman who poured the hot coffee on her crotch. And, yeah. uh, you know, caused a whole bunch of damage to her and she sued McDonald's and won and they, the media lambasted her for it. But if you actually watch the documentary or even like see pictures of, oh, not it's, looking this up, it's awful. Yeah. But, oh, it, no, Brandon's right. Like, let me interject real quick, Brandon, and I'll let you get right back to it. So what a lot oh, of people good. don't realize. So that is a big argument that people try to use is like frivolous lawsuit shit. What people don't understand about that lawsuit is like. McDonald's is supposed to keep their coffee at a very specific temperature. I think it like I, I believe it was like 180 degrees. And when they served it to her, it was at like 260 degrees. 
So when it spilled, it immediately blistered her inner thighs, her stomach, everywhere. I I had the same mindset for the longest time, like, whatever. Like, it says, like, it's coffee. Of course it's hot. No, this was at a level that should have never been at. So that that lady, she, she got, ex like, she sued for the right reasons. Yeah. I think it's one of those things, and I completely agree, but I think it's one of those things where we as Americans are allowed to sue for frivolous reasons and let the courts decide. And sure, there are certainly cases where people are just suing just to sue. And there's cases of people who, like my uncle and my family, would go out looking to get in wrecks with old ladies themselves so he could take them to small claims court, a real stand-up guy. But uh, for the most part, uh, the, the system, I don't want to say works, but um, it's set up for us to be able to sue big corporations like that if something were to happen. Now, some guy getting a hair in his food, nah. Yeah, or planting a hair on his food because yeah. I mean, you, you got this, you got you got Robert Brown up here, legit had an eight inch hair and Popeye's I, chicken sandwich, swallowed half of it, never sued, but did barf. So I got a question for Robert. Like, was it halfway down when he realized, like, because you know, like if you've ever swallowed a hair, you're just like, ah. like, did he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So let us know, Robert. But um, yeah, either way, it's unfortunate if you find hair in your food. But we've got a holiday coming up that's kind of all about food. Thanksgiving. I know I'm a huge fan of it. And there's so many different ways that we could go about there. Maybe next week we'll, we'll talk about creative things that you can do with leftovers, because we were talking today in the office about somebody that was uh, that made uh, leftover Thanksgiving pizza. And they already oh. do it with, with subs. Yeah, the, the hair was halfway down like hot cheese, ripped it up and barfed oh. everywhere. Hopefully you don't yeah. barf on Thanksgiving. But uh, <laughs> there's there's something that I guess not a lot of people think about after that. Uh, obviously, the day after is Black Friday, where there's the hype. You can save some money, even though now they do Black Friday for like four months before it. But uh, there, there's a new thing that maybe you guys know about all the time, but I didn't, called Brown Friday. And oh. you're thinking... Yeah, you're thinking, what is Brown Friday? Well, the day after Thanksgiving is usually the busiest day of the year for <laughs> roto rooters. For so many people eating so much, going to the bathroom much, it's the largest plumbing repair and sewer and drain cleaning service day in the United States ever. Yummy. I understand why. I mean, you're talking about, Jesus, this fucking dog again. Wrong with it's the dog. sixth time. Um, but I completely understand why. Honestly, you're getting ready to have a lot of people show up at your house. Like yeah. there's 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 a vast majority of people out there, they have septic tanks, right? It's probably been months before people start showing up for Thanksgiving, Christmas dinners, and so on and so forth. And the type of food that you're gonna be serving on Thanksgiving, let's be honest, it's it's pretty heavy and you start letting people let go and you haven't cleaned out that septic tank. It, it's probably a good idea to empty that out before you start. Yeah. And depending where you are, but the, some of the main factors are obviously like Toby said, large gatherings, meal prep and kitchen cleanup overload, the kind of the sinks, the garbage disposals yeah. and the post meal waste uh, kind of loads up the toilets and sewers, creating lots of work for plumbers. Many Thanksgiving hosts, they have people come over overnight, maybe an extended stay. There are extra showers, there are extra baths, extra flushes of the toilets. They may even do extra laundry because the guests are there. So this extra strain on the plumbing system is the proverbial last straw that breaks the camel's back. So uh, Roto Rooters then dubbed the day Brown Friday. That's great marketing. Due to the amount of sewage and wastewater they deal with, for example, typically Roto Rooter sees 50% increase in call volume over an average Friday and 21% more business over any of the other four day weekend holidays. So uh, I, uh, I have a, a wow. plumber uncle, and he, uh, he told me he loves getting in arguments with friends his age who went to college and are still paying at 40 years old you know, uh, money for, for student loans and how he, you know, went to, uh, to get uh, his certification and how much he makes and how much it costs. It says it's $300 just for me to pull into your driveway. Yeah. That's I'll, a job I want. Yeah, no, there's, oh, there's, yeah. um, you know, being, being a guy that works in the heating and plumbing field, you know, these guys, they earn their money. So it's like you said, it's a shitty job. Hashtag shitter is full. But uh, the, the, uh, this article by mlive.com also gives a couple of 
tips to avoid plumbing and drain trouble over the Thanksgiving weekend. Never pour your grease, turkey drippings, or cooking oil down the drains. It's going to solidify the pipes and choke the drains. Just like don't ever choke your chicken. Don't put potato peels, poultry skins, bones, rice, or pasta down the garbage disposal. Uh, That's just a bad idea. Make sure the disposal is running when you add food scraps. Don't flush wet wipes down toilets. And, uh, you know, if if you got those dude wipes, don't flush them down the toilet. Place a plunger in the guest bathroom to save your guests the embarrassment of asking for one. And M Live doesn't tell you the most important thing. Steer clear of Aunt Phyllis's creamy yet casserole-like mac and cheese. That's going to clog you and your plumbing up. Yes. 